Hey guys, your friendly neighborhood Elijah here. I am touching base with you today from the Tyndall Estates out on the patio to talk about tattoos. Yes, tattoos. I get about, <laughs> I don't know why I'm so jolly. Um, I get about two messages a week asking me what my views and thoughts are about getting a tattoo. And the reason I do is because my situation is kind of unique. Um, you see, I... I speak a lot at churches and at faith-based organizations and functions, and so with that, um, a lot of times people have an understanding of what they've seen in the Word of God, in, in the Bible, uh, um, and, and what they've heard other people say about the subject of tattoos, that tattoos are a sin. It's a sin to have, it's a sin to get, that we shouldn't do that, but yet there I am on the stage um, covered in tattoos. And so they, they have questions about that, or maybe they're wanting to get one, and they, they want to know, are they doing wrong? Are they, you know, now on the wrong side of God if they get one? And those are valid questions. Those are all very valid questions. I never get offended when someone asks me about that, because the Bible actually does say that tattoos are, um, are a sin to get. Um, it says that in one place, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. So if you've got a tattoo, don't get, uh, don't get all worried yet. Um, but let me just say this, too, for the people who are watching this who do not subscribe to the Christian belief system, and you really don't care um, what the Bible says uh, regarding tattoos, um, I'll say this, this, this video is pretty much for my friends that do subscribe to the Christian belief system and that want to just make sure that everything's cool between them and God if they get a tattoo or what, what the actual thoughts are on this. Inside of that, um, I do know this also, is that Inside of the evangelical Christian uh, belief system, which I would define myself as an evangelical Christian, Jesus is Lord uh, type thing, uh, in that there are over 1,500, over 1,500 different branches of that and different tribes within that. And so all, all believing a little something different about a little something, a, a subject. And, and so I know going into this that not everyone is going to agree with what I say. Um, the only reason I post this is because I need to have a response to the people who ask me, and this will give me a on-video response that I can just send people from this point on. And I'm just go on record here of what I understand uh, God's, God's view on the issue of tattoos. So that's what this is, okay? I'm not looking for everyone to um, receive this as truth in your life. I would ask that you pursue um, your own your own version of what you think the truth is based off of what you say you believe. Um, so if you say you believe that the Bible uh, is against tattoos, then then look it up and, and do the study on that, and I respect that. So rock on. So here's uh, the first thing I'll say. The first thing I'll say is, yes, the Bible does say in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, that a man should not, or a person should not get get markings upon their body for the dead, um, and uh, not get tattoos. Also, uh, we, we added the word tattoo in there. The word tattoo didn't actually exist back then. There, were not, uh, uh, there wasn't a such thing as tattoo shops um, back when this was being written uh, in Leviticus. And this is the first five books of the Bible. It's called the Levitical Law. This was the law that God established um, for people to live by. And, 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 and those that couldn't live by it, which was everybody, no one could live up to all the standards that God had because God had a standard of perfection, um, and he did that on purpose. That wasn't to try to disqualify people. That was for later on when his son Jesus, if you subscribe to the Christian belief system, his son Jesus came and fulfilled the law, did live up to every one of these standards. And so, so we look at this and we say, yes, okay, so he did say in his word, I've got Evan's Bible here, my son's, it's got cool little drawings in there, um, but he did say in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, that a man should not make markings upon his body for the dead. That was in reference to people um, doing things uh, for false gods, doing things for, for other belief systems. Um, and he was saying, hey, let's, let's, let's rein it in here. But he did say that. Yes, he did say that. So you can't say that God did not say that. God did say, don't get tattoos, don't make markings upon your body um, for the dead. Now... Let's go back one verse, because we, if we accept that, then we have to accept that he said in the verse right before that, in verse 27, that also we should not cut the uh, hair of the temples of our heads, so let them, let them hang down low. Do your hair hang low? Does it, and, and also don't to, uh, trim your beards. Don't trim the size of your beards. Always let your beards grow out. And so if we accept the tattoo thing as, yes, you, you have to not get a tattoo, you have to abstain from tattoos, then we have to also accept the fact that we should all be growing big, um, big beards. And I know a lot of the hipsters are growing beards right now. 
but give it a couple of years and you'll be like, oh no, I guess I got to sin and shave this beard. Uh, <laughs> so is it a sin to shave your beard and to cut your hair? Remember, what we're talking about right here is what the Bible said in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus lays out the Levitical law. Now, um, the Levitical law was Old Testament. What we know, the Bible is broken down into two sections. The New Testament pretty much is the, the right half of the Bible, and the left half of the Bible is the Old Testament. It's two new covenants, okay? There's one Old Covenant, the way it was, and then there's a New Covenant, the way it was after Jesus had come and d did his thing. So now let's talk about that, because that has everything to do with whether a tattoo is right or wrong. Jesus came knowing that man could not fulfill the law, live up to this standard, and Jesus came as the flawless person, being half God, half man, he lived as man, struggled with everything that we struggle with, and fulfilled the law by never having uh, sinned, never having broken this Levitical uh, law and these standards, and then he put himself on the cross, allowed himself to be murdered on a cross, and he fulfilled the law. The reason he did that was so that way he could swap places with us. He did it in man skin and man flesh so that way he, we, he could be our substitute and now we accept his identity and he accepted our identity of sin. We accept his identity of righteousness. The law has been fulfilled in Jesus. Okay, so now he said when he was on this earth, there's a new law I give you. The new law is this. He's wiping away, with this statement, he's wiping away the old Levitical law. The new law is this, that you love the Lord God with all your heart, and that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those two things are the primary focus that Jesus taught. And so everything falls under that umbrella, and it actually covers the big things. It, you love the Lord God with all your heart. So if I love God with all my heart, then I get closer to God. You ever notice that when you're close to somebody, you begin to act like them? You begin to have the same language as them? You begin to have the same characteristics as them? You can't be around somebody a lot and have a deep relationship with them without kind of being like them. So if I love God with all my heart, it draws me closer to God, and that draws me closer to being like God. And if I'm like God, then it's going to wipe out a lot of the, the petty stuff that, that doesn't really matter because my heart is towards God. My heart is toward a higher purpose. My heart is toward love, not hate. It's toward acceptance, not judgment. That's what Jesus stood for. He said to be like that. He said the things I do, the things you guys see me do, is just the things I see my Father do. And so we're becoming more like Him. Love the Lord God with all of our hearts. So that covers most of the law. And then love your neighbors as you love yourself. So I don't have to have a law that tells me don't murder somebody anymore. You know why? Because I love, if I love my neighbor as I love myself, I ain't trying to get killed by somebody coming in. I, and if I'm not, if I love myself enough to not want to get murdered, then I will know I should love others enough to not go murder them and not go steal from them and not rob from them. And so Jesus' new law that he gave us was love God with all your heart. You become more like God. You act more like God. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. So what do we do now with these gray areas like like drinking alcohol, like uh, like smoking, like tattoos, like uh, all these other things. Like like in the Bible, they were wearing robes. They weren't wearing pants. They were wearing robes. And so what do we do with this ungodly pant wearing in culture today? Do we adjust to the culture? Do we just give in to the culture and all wear pants? Well, we pay attention to the culture, um, but the main thing is this. We are led now, what Jesus said is, I'm going to leave, and when I leave, he told his disciples this, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is going to be to you what I was to you. The Holy Spirit, the original translation is parakletos. Now, I can barely speak um, English and a few cuss words in Spanish, so I may be saying that wrong, but the original was parakletos, which means the comforter, the counselor, the leader, guider, and director, and so the Holy Spirit now internally is doing for us what Jesus was for the disciples. He's teaching them. He's teaching us from the inside what is right and what is wrong. So is tattoo, uh, getting a tattoo a sin? Absolutely it is for the person that it's wrong for. See, the definition of sin is this. It's missing the mark, missing the target. And so you have a target that you were created and designed to hit in your lifetime because the creator designed you that way. Um, it's like I've got a container here, and this container is full of coffee. 
It's like asking the container what its purpose is. The container may not know its complete purpose. The substance on the inside was placed there by a higher power. That's me. I placed the substance of coffee in there to serve a purpose of uh, uh, filling me with coffee. Now, the coffee is the substance that fulfills the purpose. The container doesn't actually know its purpose a lot of times. Uh, and so, we are the container, okay? And as we go through life, as we get closer to God, God fills us with our purpose, the substance of what we're created to do. And that's why we grow into having these natural abilities, natural, and, and so it becomes, oh, it answers its own question. This is what I was created to do. This is my gifting in life. And, and so, Based off of that, based off of that purpose, that's where we find where our mark is. Okay, so if your mark is to go into a a a, uh, a nation or a country or a tribe or a village where they would be highly offended at someone with tattoos and it would disqualify you, then absolutely getting a tattoo for you would be a sin. You would be missing the mark because it would disqualify you from the purpose that you were here to do and here to accomplish. And so there could be people who honestly, genuinely say. Tattoos are a sin, and I have a conviction against getting tattoos, and that could be because the Holy Spirit himself is saying for you, do not get a tattoo. That is not a right thing for you to do, um, and that absolutely makes sense, and you need to pay attention to that because that's going to keep you from doing It's going to close the door on what you're supposed to do, um, but what you have to be careful for is to tell somebody else they shouldn't get a tattoo because your understanding and your conviction tells you that Tattoos are a sin. Tattoos are a sin for you. A tattoo may not be a sin for someone else because they don't have the same purpose that you do. They don't have the same assignment on their life as you do. And so you can't preach your convictions because you have them as truth for somebody else because that conviction could be specifically for you, okay? And so you've got to be very careful about that. So are tattoos a sin? For some people, they are. For some people, they're not. For some people, they're actually a tool that can be used. So that's what you need to pay attention to. Are tattoos a sin? Are they biblically wrong? According to the Bible, remember, the law has been fulfilled by Jesus. He gave us a new law to love God with all our heart, love our neighbor as we love ourselves, we grow closer to him. Now he gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us into today's culture. And in today's culture, he will show you your purpose. And within that purpose, you ask yourself, is this right or wrong for what I'm created to do? If it's wrong, then absolutely don't do it. If you have a conviction against tattoos, don't get one. But you don't have to stand on the street corner and tell other people this. They're wrong for having them or wrong for getting them because you actually didn't design them and you really have no idea. And on the other side of that coin, if you have tattoos or if you believe in, in getting tattoos, you can't preach that it's okay for everyone to get one because it may not. It may be sin in their life. So those are my thoughts on tattoos. I hope you understood it. Get in your Bible. See what it, see what it says. If you subscribe to the Christian Belief System, those are my thoughts. You guys have a great day. Rock on.